dear all welcome the topic which we are going to discuss is about biosignal acquisition module 2 for the course biomedical instrumentation this course gives an overview about the importance of biosignal amplifiers which is used to amplify the weak signal being generated from the human body it, it also gives the importance of pacemaker which will be placed near to the chest of human being in order to control the activity of human heart. The lecture also gives an overview about cardiopulmonary bypass surgery being done for any patient. So this will be the syllabus of the course. The first part will be about the bioamplifiers, the second part will be about the pacemakers and the third part will be about artificial heart walls and the final part will be about the kidney machine. In particular, the artificial heart walls, the heart and lung machine is actually nothing but the cardiopulmonary bypass surgery. Before we enter into the core content of the lecture, we need to understand the block diagram of biomedical instrumentation. We have a measure hand that is the human body or human being and we have the energy source which may be either electrical energy, light energy, mechanical energy and ultrasonic energy and we have a sensors and transducers which has been used to detect the electrical signals being generated from the human body. In biological aspects as I told you in the previous class we call these sensors and transducers as biopotential electrodes. So the signals which are being detected from the electrodes or so called sensors and transducers will be detected and will be displayed as an output for data storage, data analysis and so on and so. However, the drawback is our human body will have the electrical signals which are very low amplitude and low frequency and thus we need an amplifier stage in order to amplify the weak signals being generated from the human body. And this stage is very important to understand the signal being generated from the human body. So let us start discussing about this particular stage in the biomedical instrumentation that about uh, pre-amplifiers and signal processing stage. Bioamplifiers. So as I told you all the biological or biological signals of our human body will have low amplitude and low frequency. Hence we are in need of a bioamplifiers which is actually an uh, electrophysiological device which helps to increase the amplitude level of any physiological act electrical activity from the human body. A schematic diagram of instrumentation amplifiers is being displayed over here where V1 and V2 is actually the input being collected from the bio biological electrical signals and that has been feed through the set of amplifiers in order to amplify the signals and the output will be displayed as an output by the physician. So this bioamplifiers we, we can say it is a electrophysiological device or in other terms it is actually a circuit consisting of op amps. So there are some basic requirements of biological amplifiers. The first one is this biological amplifier setup should have high input impedance value ranging from 2 mega ohms to 10 mega ohms. Such high input, input impedance value actually reduces the distortion level of the input signal. And the second most important thing is we should have a proper isolation circuit and a protection circuit so that the patient will be restricted from any kind of electrical shock. The output of the signal will be in the range of microvolt to millivolt and hence this bioamplifier should have high voltage gain in the order of 100 decibels. So these are all the basic requirements of biological amplifiers. So there are two important types of uh, bioamplifiers. The first one is instrumentation amplifiers and we have seen the schematic diagram in the previous slide. It is a three amplifier setup in which 
before the signal goes to the next stage it comprises of an additional special amplifier which has been attached with high input impedance so this specialized setup we call it as instrumentation amplifier and the second one is isolation amplifier which actually isolates the patient from the device carefully so we can see an isolation barrier which has been placed in between the input signal stage and output signal stage so it provides up to 1012 ohm insulation between the patient and the power line and thereby it prevents any kind of accidental shock to the patient so the next topic of this lecture is about the pacemakers and its importance pacemakers so the pacemaker is actually a small device that is implanted inside the chest of the patient so which prevents slow heartbeat of the patient so let us understand how this pacemaker works so this pacemaker actually generates some kind of electrical impulses inside the chest which are delivered by the electrodes so that causes the heart muscle chamber to contract thereby it pumps out the blood outside the heart hence we can understand this device replaces or it actually regulates or more precisely it controls the function of human heart there are two types of pacemakers single chamber pacemaker and we have dual chamber pacemaker the one which carries the electrical impulse only to the right ventricle of the heart is called single chamber pacemaker and the one which carries the electrical impulses to the right ventricle and right atrium of the heart is called dual chamber pacemaker so the next part is about artificial heart valves or a heart and lung machine which is actually cardiopulmonary bypass surgery so this cardiopulmonary bypass surgery is a technique in which a machine temporarily takes the function of a uh, heart and lungs during any kind of surgery in a hospital so it maintains the circulation of blood and at the same time it uh, supplies the required oxygen content to the patient body so we could have come across this kind of machines in any operation theaters where the doctor will be performing any kind of surgery to the patient using this cardiopulmonary bypass surgery machine so this machine is also called as heart lung machine which actually circulates the blood and also it it oxygenates the blood while performing the surgery the so the blood which is returning to the heart will, will be diverted through this heart lung machine or in other words we can say it's a pump oxygenator before it retur returns to the arterial circulation hence this heart lung machine plays the role of both heart and lung because it pumps the blood and at the same time it supplies oxygen to the blood now in the next few minutes we will understand how this machine works and how, what is the flow chart of this machine and how this particular machine plays the role of both heart and lungs during an open heart surgery so let us understand how this cardiopulmonary bypass machine works so this is the schematic diagram which explains how the instrument works so we have a cardiopulmonary bypass machine and it comprises of two main components that is the pump and the oxygenator so we have a continuous pump and we have oxygenator stage and let us understand how it works the pump usually comprises of several rotating motor driven pumps which gently propels the blood from the human body so by altering the speed of a revolution that is rpm of the pump head the blood flow is produced by centrifugal force so the second component is about oxygenator so the infused blood from the pump will be pumped inside the oxygenator stage in which will in one end we have a gas inlet through which the incident oxygen will be supplied at this oxygenator stage the oxygen is transferred to the infused blood and it removes the 
carbon dioxide from the venous blood. This oxygenator is specially designed with some kind of uh, microporous polypropylene fibers. So the blood flows outside the fibers while the gas passes through inside the fibers and thus it gets separated out. So due to the gas inlet and outlet between the oxygenator, there will be some difference in temperature. So due to which there will be another component near to the oxygenator stage that is called heat exchanger. It is actually integrated with the oxygenator and placed near to it in order to reduce the release of gaseous emboli due to the alteration in the temperature of the saturated bed. So the purified oxygenated blood from the oxygenator will be passed out and will be sent as an input towards the human heart. And finally, the venomous or the undeoxygenated blood will be collected as an output from the heart towards the blood reservoir. So we have a reservoir as the next component where during this process the deoxygenated blood is drained through the normal gravity into the blood reservoir and from blood reservoir actually the cycle continues once again so from the blood reservoir the pump once again moves the blood from the reservoir to the oxygenator and it follows through the heat exchanger and once again it follows to the, the normal arterial circulation so this is the process of cardiopulmonary bypass surgery machine during any open heart surgery process. The technique is used only for temporary purpose until the patient comes back to his consciousness. Hence, we can understand that this simple cardiopulmonary machine with a simple working plays the role of both the heart and the role of lungs which means it pumps the blood and at the same time it oxygenates the blood. So the next pro topic is about the kidney machine which is actually the dialysis we all know. It's a process in which includes the purifying the blood of a person of whom the kidney is not working properly. The dialysis includes removal of waste products such as creatinine and urea from the blood whose pair kidney is in the state of kidney failure. So let us understand how this process has been done. So the methodology in involved during this dialysis machine process is very simple. The principle of dialysis involves diffusion of solute across a semi permeable membrane. So during this process the blood is collected from the patient for a cleaning purpose and we pass through the chamber called dialyzer and it will be re removing all the unwanted waste products or it will access actually acts as a filter in removing the waste products and the purified blood will be once again passed as an input towards the human body. So during the process the dialysate will flow in one direction and the human blood will flow in, uh, in the opposite direction and as, a, as, and as a result it acts as a ultra filtration process which results in free dissolved solutes and purified blood will be sent back as input towards the human body. So thank you all, have a nice day.